Brooke Lopez is the most criminally underrated player across the entire NBA, as the post-scoring, spot-up three-point floor spacing, and backside defense from the Brooklyn Nets franchise scoring leader are qualities that, for the most part, get completely discredited. Meanwhile, Milwaukee's franchise leader in about every category in Giannis has put himself so far ahead of any other slasher that's ever graced the court that opposing fans have reverted to nicknaming him as quote-unquote, run and dunk man. Also, despite his team being atop the Eastern Conference owning the best record in the association by far, why in the world haven't we heard more of a narrative revolving around this man's case to win a third career MVP? Despite everyone marking it down to a two-man race between Jokic and Embiid, the Greek Freak's the only player to be top five in both points and rebounds per game. Giannis also leads the NBA in defensive rating, whereas in that category Embiid's number four and Jokic is number 10. Among power forwards specifically, Giannis's NBA best defense becomes even more evident. The gap between the number one ranked Giannis and the number two ranked Porzingis is the same gap between the number two ranked Porzingis and the number 15 ranked Dorian Finney-Smith. Still, not only does Giannis hear from casuals that he's not this team's most important defender, but Hall of Famer Kevin Garnett just joined his fellow former Boston Celtic and Kendrick Perkins in labeling Giannis as not even the best player on his own team. KG came out with the statement recently that Drew Holiday has been the Bucks' best player in the second half of the season. Drew's of course a piece that Milwaukee can't win without. The four-team deal involving New Orleans, Milwaukee, Denver, and OKC, the Bucks giving up George Hill, a future first-round pick, and players that aren't in the association anymore to receive Drew Holiday, is going to be a deal that'll never be forgotten in Cream City. This is no disrespect to Drew. He's the best guard defender in the game and a crafty offensive weapon who's averaged 17 per game this month. Nevertheless, a blasphemous statement from KG saying he's the best on the team right now. He's probably the top leader right now. I don't often like to formally speak for the players themselves though, but I can pretty much guarantee you that even Holiday himself wouldn't agree with that claim that he's Milwaukee's top dog. Given Garnett's a former Celtic who still has ties to that organization, that statement from him about Holiday being the number one was likely to buy some real estate in the Bucks' heads. But the bond with this Bucks team is just too strong as with new glue guys on the wing like the upbeat jingling Joe Ingles and an enforcer type in the even newer Jay Crowder, this team's chemistry isn't breaking anytime soon. In addition to Crowder, Myers Leonard was another piece added late in the season and you'd think all these new additions, especially with the drama that Crowder and Leonard had dealt with prior to coming to Milwaukee, would hamper the vibes even the slightest bit. Just takes time to get used to one another. But when asked if the Bucks are more of a family slash brotherhood more than a team recently, Adetokounmpo explained why it's so easy for guys to fit in, saying, quote, players are traded but remain in the same circle as us. Today we saw Hill and Nora, who played for us recently. We built this relationship. No matter what, we did this. We'll be brothers. Same with DiVincenzo a few days ago. The Warriors beat us, but with this man we won a championship. He helped us to be great. After the match, we hugged him. I'm happy to see guys who have played for us succeed. I'm happy for Nora, Hill. It's more than basketball, it's a brotherhood. Whether we win or lose, we stay together. Anyone who comes or leaves this team knows that we're a brotherhood and we always stick together." End quote. That togetherness translates to between the lines and is one of, if not the main reason making the Milwaukee Bucks the clear title favorite in this 22-23 campaign. Before going further in depth on how this team meshes on the court, just 7.4% of you watching are subscribed, so subscribe and turn on notifications, plus leave a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. There's been questions about this team's offense given it ranks just 14th best across the NBA on the season overall. However, the trust and flow seems to be reaching a different stratosphere at just the right time. Peaking, albeit over a small 10 game sample size in March, the Bucks this month own a 122.4 offensive rating, good enough for the third best offense among all teams, only trailing Philadelphia and Sacramento. But over the course of the season as a whole, it hasn't been all bad offensively, In the pick and roll specifically is where it's been actually pretty nice. 
Milwaukee's generating the third most amount of points per night from their pick and roll man, only trailing the Lakers and Sixers. Leading to that effectiveness, it's both the versatile options the Bucks can put out as that roll man, in addition to the elusive creation from their ball handlers. Their main pick and roll action of course comes with Lopez as the screener. The way Coach Bud uses Giannis at just the right volume as the roll man, however, that's what makes this Bucks offense unpredictable and overwhelming. Giannis is only a roll man 6.2% of the time, which the Bucks may want to increase the slightest bit. But whether defenses are switching or playing drop, the strength of a Dedekumpo may need to be utilized down there more often. But I have no critiques for Coach Bud in this regard because he's creatively featuring Middleton as the roller in that stick to him pick and roll as well. Here he's going to set the drag screen, glue himself to Oladipo, fake the pop before beating him on the roll like the play entails. Another drag screen and more sound execution takes place right here where this time it's a double drag with Lopez popping, Giannis rolling, and Connaughton and Crowder pristinely spaced out on the weak side. It's great to see the trade pickup from last year who the Bucks would re-sign and Joe Ingles looking healthy after his torn ACL that he suffered with Utah. Known as a spot-up shooter and defender, Joe can also create really well off the dribble, where out of this pick and roll, he fakes the drive with his eyes, fakes the kick out with that eye contact as well, and his arm motion this time, reading and reacting to the off-balance magic defense to then spot Lopez through the lane with a baseball pass. When going downhill off a pick and roll, Ingles is able to collapse the defense with his rim pressure, stop on a dime, and pass fake to the corner before leaving it for his roll man. Obviously, this team's identity is on the defensive end, where they own the NBA's third best rating, just ahead of Boston. Early in the year, this pre-switch between Holiday and Lopez helps maintain the versatility of Brooke, as he can stunt off quickly, with Holiday switching onto iHeart, then shocking Brunson by flying over to stuff the shot back to his grill. The best part about this Bucks defense is how they mix up fundamental stances with aggressive stances on a possession to possession basis, then flip the script on you when they get too predictable. Many teams rely on laying everything out there with an all out effort to get stops, but the Bucks are more reliably able to count on the multitude of lengthy bodies they have and the picture perfect footwork, lateral quickness, and instinctiveness they have in addition to that. In other words, this Bucks team with Brooke as the backbone who they couldn't live without and Giannis as the rangiest safety not only on their team but in the game can take over a game at will defensively. Who deserves more spotlight on the Bucks? Two shoutouts from my last upload and this one, but the Speaks winners are set and my five winners are Joshua Rosen, FYI Sin, Kent Saludo, Swoo, and Irvin Guerra. Given these are previous commenters, I have most of their handles, but I don't think I have FYI Sin's handle, so leave your handle, bud. These five win a free shoe or jersey of their choosing. Congratulations to the winners. Now the Speaks board resets, so leave your take on today's question. To be first on it, story is yours in Community Speaks, and peace.